Welcome everyone to the 2018 Texas Appellate Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Uh, the Texas Appellate Hall of Fame is a joint project between the appellate section of the State Bar of Texas and the Supreme Court Historical Society. Today's inductees were selected by 12 voting trustees, themselves specialists in appellate law. Today we honor six inductees, the largest class of inductees in the Hall of Fame's history. In this year's class of inductees, we have four appellate justices and two appellate practitioners. Among the justices, we have three chief justices of the Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio Court of Appeals. Those justices include former law review editors and practitioners who helped create important constitutional precedent, served their legal community by teaching law, writing legal guides, and frequently speaking at CLE events, were civil rights pioneers, worked to craft local appellate rules, and helped usher us into the present day e-filing system. We also have two seasoned appellate practitioners who practiced before the Texas and United States Supreme Courts. These practitioners led the way in carving out appellate practice as a specialty, were hailed by their peers as among the best appellate practitioners of their time, and served as mentors to today's generation of appellate specialists. Of particular note, we induct the first female jurist into the Texas Appellate Hall of Fame and the first Hispanic member. This year's class is no exception to what has become a Hall of Fame rule. A group of appellate practitioners and jurists who unquestionably deserve this recognition and will rightly serve as exemplars of appellate practitioners for years to come. The inductees in no particular order are Chief Justice Carlos Cadena of the San Antonio Court of Appeals, Chief Justice Clarence Guitard of the Dallas Court of Appeals, Chief Justice Adele Hedges of the 14th Court of Appeals in Houston, Justice Shirley Butts of the San Antonio Court of Appeals, Appellate Practitioner Charles Black Sr., and Appellate Practitioner Hobart Price Sr. We are honored to have judicial colleagues, law firm partners, mentees, and family members who themselves became lawyers with us today to say a few words about each inductee. Our first speaker is Rebecca Galvan. Rebecca is the daughter of Chief Justice Carlos Cadena and an experienced and board certified family law attorney. She began specializing in family law after working as an assistant district attorney. She participates in numerous bar activities, including volunteering as part of the San Antonio Bar Association's Community Justice Program. All this after a successful career as a journalist. Please welcome Rebecca Galvan. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Rebecca Galvan uh, and one of Chief Justice Carlos Cadena's many children. Um, many thanks to colleagues Sharon Calloway, Tom Crofts, Joe Chris Lopez, who is here today, and some of the others may be as well, uh, Rudy Garza, Chief Justices Catherine Stone and Phil Hardberger, who nominated Dad, and others like Laura Cavaretta, who gave intellectual challenge, depth, friendship, and purpose to Dad's life. One of my colleagues, uh, San Antonio lawyer Craig White, came into my office this week to congratulate me on Dad's being named to the Hall of Fame. I had to tell him uh, I didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Craig said, you know, it's one thing to be nominated and quite another to be remembered 20 years after your death. And um, those of you who knew him uh, or knew about him knew that he was a private attorney for some years, argued in one cases before the United States Supreme Court, acted as city attorney, taught at St. Mary's Law School. He went on to serve 35 years on the Fourth Court of Appeals, 25 of which were as Chief Justice. Those of you who remember him may still picture yourself standing for what seemed like forever at the podium in the courtroom as he would 
fix his eyes on you and his attention and grill you as if over a slow fire. <laughs> People still stop me in the courthouse today to tell me these stories. Uh, I'm sure they're much easier to laugh about in retrospect. <laughs> My memories of him were more about such things as day-to-day -day life on the court, such as his friendship with Chief Justice Blair Bruzzy Reeves, with whom Dad shares the name of the Cadena Reeves Justice Center in San Antonio. Justice Reeves would roar up, onto, roar up on his motorcycle into the driveway of my parents' house. My mother would call out, Carlos, Bruzzy's here. Dad would grab his robe, run out of the house, climb into the sidecar, strap on his helmet, and off they'd go to the courthouse. Many of you may know that my mother, Gloria Cadena, was a widow with eight children when she married Carlos, who had one daughter. So I want to give a shout out to my sisters and brothers who were lucky enough to know and love Dad, and especially to my sister, Tracy Cadena Colburn, who so generously shared him with us and continues to do so. Thank you very much. Next we have uh, Justice Terry Jennings who will speak about inductee Chief Justice Adele Hedges. Justice Jennings was a colleague of Chief Justice Hedges uh, when she served as an associate justice on the first court of appeals. He has served as an appellate justice for more than 15 years, is board certified in civil appellate law, and has served more than a decade on the Texas Supreme Court Advisory Committee. He has been honored for his service on law review as an appellate justice and as a UT alumni. Please welcome Justice Terry Jennings. Thank you. Adele's beloved husband, Dan, and her son, Clinton, could not be here today. Uh, truth be told, uh, Adele's untimely passing, uh, I think uh, their hearts are still very much broken. Uh, but Dan said to be sure to tell you all that Adele would have been tremendously pleased to receive this recognition, tremendously honored for your recognizing her for her contributions to the practice of appellate law in Texas. You see, Adele had a sincere and abiding respect for appellate lawyers and all that you do. She knew firsthand how painstakingly hard you all work and how dedicated you are to getting it right in every case. And she would have been profoundly moved to know that the Texas Appellate Bar, in return, has thought so highly of her and her work as to, as to bestow upon her your highest honor. If she were here today, I assure you, her eyes would be filled with tears of gratitude. I got to know Justice Hedges when I first came to the first Court of Appeals as a new judge in January of 2001. As a justice, she had a textbook perfect judicial temperament. She was detached, always focusing on the law and the facts not the result. Adele was not afraid to find in favor of a deserving plaintiff in a civil case or a defendant in a criminal case, even when she knew there would be political consequences. And sometimes there were political consequences. And with some of her, and with some of her colleagues, she courageously took the heat in some very controversial cases. Like many other members of the first Court of Appeals at the time, Adele served as an example of what I should be as a new judge, and her example served to make me a much better judge than I would have been without her. You would be hard-pressed to name a person with more dignity and grace than Adele Hedges. She brought a sense of taste and refinement to everyone and every situation. Her manners were impeccable, and she was unflappable even in the presence of some very flappable colleagues. 
Adele was a consummate professional, but you would have been greatly, greatly mistaken if you thought of Adele Hedges in any way as a detached person. Throughout her life, Adele spread peace and serenity through her love of literature, art, and music. Without any pretense, she could quote from French and English literature to enhance a conversation or diffuse a difficult discussion. And Adele Hedges was the kind of person who loved her friends and told them so. When they suffered from an ailment, a loss, or a setback, she was always there for them with words of support and encouragement. Out of genuine concern and empathy, she would offer them sound advice and act on their behalf, often without them knowing it. The one expression of Adele's that sticks out in my mind the most was when she would say to me, Terry, I'm worried about our friend, and you can think of anyone on the court or any of our friends. Let's do something for them and offer our support and help. At Adele's celebration of life, Former uh, Justice Murray Cohen talked about Adele's, quote, signature move of friendship, unquote, the hug. In this maneuver, Adele would come up to you nearly face to face, put her arm around you, and say, remember, you are my friend and I love you. And we would remember. Adele knew that the way to have a friend was to be a friend. I think that former Justice Sharon McCauley, who worked with Adele when she was the Chief Justice of the 14th Court of Appeals, said it best when she noted that many people have used many words to describe Adele. Elegant, classy, professional, tenacious, graceful, intelligent, but most important, Adele was loyal a friend who gave us a great gift, her full attention. In her professional life as an appellate lawyer, first court justice, and chief justice of the 14th Court of Appeals, Adele accomplished so very much that made her worthy of this recognition. She was also a valued colleague, and to some of us, a mentor but she was so much more. Ultimately, what made Adele Hedges a woman of immense influence was her sincere concern for and love of her friends. So on behalf of Dan and Clinton Hedges, our dear friend Chief Justice Adele Hedges and her many, many friends, it is my honor to say thank you. Thank you so very much for this tremendous honor for our very dear friend, and for remembering her. Thank you on behalf of Chief Justice Adele Hedges. Uh, next, we have uh, Justice, or Judge Ted Aiken, as he goes by. He's going to speak about his colleague and close friend, Chief Justice Clarence Guitard. Judge Aiken wanted to be here in person today, but was already obligated to attend a judicial conference. So he kindly recorded and forwarded an audio clip of comments about Chief Justice Guitard. Judge Aiken graduated from SMU School of Law, and after military service, entered private practice in Dallas. He has served as a county court judge, a district court judge, and an appellate court judge. He still sits as a visiting judge while also working as a full-time mediator and arbitrator. So let's now hear from Judge Aiken. Thank you. My name is Ted Aiken. I am a former justice on the 5th District Court of Appeals. I had the privilege of working with Chief Justice Guitar for 12 years, first on the 5th Court of Civil Appeals, which at that time had three justices, and later when the court was given criminal jurisdiction and the number of justices expanded to 13. During these 12 years, he was my mentor, both as a judge and as a man. He was one of the finest persons 
that I have ever known. He had a keen intellect and an incisive mind and a deep respect for the rule of law. He was always concerned about the quality of the opinions of the court and worked closely with each new member of the court so as to improve the quality of each opinion. He always urged us to write with brevity and clarity with the reader in mind. In 1975, he drafted the first rules for the Dallas court. Later, when our number increased to 13, he rewrote those rules again so that over a period of time, each member of the court would sit with each another member of the court an equal number of times. Chief Justice Guitard has done much for the judiciary of Texas. In 1939, he was one of three of the first briefing attorneys for the Texas Supreme Court. At that time, the Supreme Court selected the three top law graduates from Texas, Baylor, and SMU. Chief Justice Guitard from Baylor, Chief Justice Joe Green of the Supreme Court from Texas, and Harry Shuford from SMU. In addition to his opinions, Chief Justice Guitard has contributed much more to our judiciary. For example, he was the initial principal drafter of the Texas Rules of Civil Procedure, which were then adopted by the Supreme Court. He served on the Rules Committee thereafter for many years and was generally the member who drafted changes. The late Jim Gronzer, who served on the committee, told me that when they finished discussing changes to the rule, all would retire, but then except Chief Justice Guitard, who went to his room and commenced drafting and would present the finished product the next morning, which the committee would adopt. Apart from being the epitome of what every judge should be, he was also a kind, Christian, and thoughtful person who cared about what effect a legal decision would have upon people as well as the law. He never spoke ill of anyone. The worst that he would say was, he is not a person whose company I would seek out. You could not have selected a more deserving justice for this high honor than Chief Justice Clarence Guitard. Next, we have Justice Rebecca Martinez, who is here to honor Justice Shirley Butts and who sits as an associate justice on the same Fourth Court of Appeals. After graduating from Boston University School of Law and working for a large firm in Boston, Justice Martinez returned to Texas and clerked for a federal magistrate and appellate judge before returning to private practice. Justice Martinez is active in many bar organizations, including the bar board of the National Association of Women Judges. Please welcome Justice Martinez. Good afternoon. I'm Justice Rebecca Martinez, and I'm here today to recognize a true trailblazer, Justice Shirley W. Butts, and to celebrate her induction into the Texas Appellate Hall of Fame. First, let me recognize also the clerk of my court, who's here, uh, Keith Hoddle, as well as our Chief Justice, Sandy Bryan Marion. Justice Butts was the first woman to sit on the appellate court that I currently sit on, the Fourth Court of Appeals in San Antonio. But her proud tradition of service and excellence in the courtroom started long before her history-making appointment. Justice Butts received her law degree from the University of Texas in 1954, a time when discrimination against women was rampant. When she started practicing law in Fort Worth, there were only about 5,000 women attorneys in all of the United States. Early in her career, a sitting judge told her, I don't want to hear a woman prosecuting a case in my court, and that he, quote, wanted a real lawyer in here. She stood her ground graciously, but firmly, informing him, I am a real lawyer. She moved to San Antonio and taught at St. Mary's University School of Law until 1981. As many in the room, in this room know, forgive me, 
As many in this room know, that was the year the legislator, legislature added criminal jurisdiction to Texas Intermediate Appellate Court's dockets, more than doubling their caseload to handle that volume. I'm sorry, to handle that volume, the legisl le legislature created 25 new benches. Then Governor Bill Clemens, a Republican, appointed 24 men and one woman to fill those seats. That one woman was Shirley Butts, a Democrat. Justice Butts helped draft the fourth court's local rules, improving the experience of practicing before our court. Her professionalism, competence, and well-researched opinions enabled her to achieve consensus among the seven justices on our court. She also carved out time to mentor the young attorneys who served as briefing attorneys. When Justice Butts retired from the bench, she returned to private practice with her husband, Charles, a distinguished attorney in his own right, who was inducted into the Texas Criminal Defense Lawyers Hall of Fame in 2011. These partners in love and law represented clients together in Texas appellate courts in both civil and criminal cases. Justice Butts dedicated her career to appellate law and to supporting those who practiced it. Justice Butts' experience paved the way for the Fourth Court of Appeals to become the first all-female appellate court in the nation in 2005, a proud distinction we have again today. Even though she's no longer with us, I am delighted for Justice Shirley Butts to receive this honor posthumously. Thank you to Beth Watkins, the president of the, the past president of the San Antonio Bar Association for uh, joining my nomination for Justice Butts for this well-deserved recognition. And thank you to the State Bar's appellate section, its Appellate Hall of Fame Committee, and the Supreme Court Historical Society for bestowing this great honor on a true Texas trailblazer, Justice Shirley W. Butts. Next, we have Charles McFarland, the great-grandson of Charles S. Black, Sr., and an attorney in Houston with the firm of McFarland PLLC, specializing in the areas of eminent domain, condemnation, and property rights. Charles earned his JD from the U University of Texas and was a partner at Vincent and Elkins before forming his own firm. He is also a past president of the Texas Association of Civil Trial and Espe Appellate Specialists, uh, please welcome Charles McFarlane. Thank you. My great grandfather, Charles uh, Lunn Black Sr., was born in Hillsborough, Texas in 1883. He did not attend college. He did not attend law school. The dean of the University of Texas Law School let Mr. Black borrow textbooks to prepare for the bar exam, which you could, in those days, sit for without a law degree. He always remembered that generosity and for years would anonymously support students at the law school who needed help with tuition. After passing the bar, he practiced briefly in Hillsborough before returning to Austin to make his career. He worked with Judge W.F. Ramsey, who later became a Texas Supreme Court Justice. He uh, went on to practice with Judge Graham Smedley, who also became a Texas Supreme Court Justice. Mr. Black became known as one of the state's outstanding appellate lawyers, practicing with a firm of Black and Graves, and later Black, Graves, and Staten. At the time of his death, he had argued in more Texas Supreme Court cases than any other lawyer and had argued in some of the most important antitrust, utility rate, and land use cases ever tried in the state of Texas. He also argued several cases in front of the United States Supreme Court. It is said that the professional life of even the best practicing lawyer compared to his peers in politics or literature or even the appellate judiciary is written in sand to be resurrected largely by reference to a few fortuitously 
publicized items of litigation, by somewhat colorless figures of the number of cases tried or argued, or at best in descriptive terms applicable generally to lawyers of his kind. His law partner, Ireland Graves, who later founded Graves Doherty, described Charles Black as the strongest appellate advocate he had ever known. This view was, uh, by chance, and lucky for me, confirmed to me personally by uh, Chief Justice Joe Greenhill. On behalf of the Black family, I want to thank the Texas Supreme Court Historical Society and the appellate section for this recognition of Mr. Black and his career. Thank you. And finally, we have Michael Young, a Dallas appellate practitioner who is a partner and chair of the appellate section of Hobart Price Sr.'s former firm, now known as Clark Hill Strasburger. Michael earned his JD at Harvard, is board certified in civil appellate law, and is admitted to just about every federal appellate court in the nation. Please welcome Michael Young. When we think about the pioneers of the appellate practice in Texas, we think of the 1940s and 1950s, and people like the late Jim Kronzer and my 99-year-old partner, Royal Brin. But Hobart Price Sr. began his appellate practice in 1921. He was a genius. He graduated from a began his appellate practice at the ripe old age of 22, after having served in the Army in World War I, and after having served as a quiz master at UT Law School and one of the founding board of editors of the Texas Law Review. He quickly developed an appellate practice, not only handling appeals, but consulting on legal issues arising in the trial courts and fielding questions from his partners from courthouses all over the state. In short, exactly what we have come today to regard as an appellate practice. I did not have the opportunity to know Mr. Price, but the stories about him are legendary, and I want to tell you only one. Uh, when Mrs. Price was expecting their son, Hobart Price Jr., her doctor told her that she needed to get out and get some physical exercise. The problem was that Mr. Price abhorred physical exercise. So she would go out and walk in the neighborhood in the evenings, and he would follow along behind her in the car. Well, one evening, the Highland Park police came up <laughs> alongside Mrs. Price and said, uh, excuse me, ma'am, uh, is that man back there in the Model T molesting you? And her response was, no, officer, he's already molested me. <laughs> Hobart Price practiced for 44 years, first with the Touchstone Gormley firm in Dallas, and then became, in 1940, a founding member of the, the firm that came to be known as Strasburger and Price. Except for a brief uh, hiatus during World War II when he served again in the military, he practiced. Uh, for 44 years before his untimely death in 1965. He left a legacy not only for us in his law firm, but for appellate practitioners across the state. And so it is with great pride that I accept on behalf of his friends and family and his colleagues in spirit at Clark Hill Strasburger his election to the Texas Appellate Hall of Fame. One final round of applause to all the 2018 inductees. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jackie, and thank you for all of your presence today. Um, what a great class, and I'm very, very pleased for the hard work that you've done, Jackie, and uh, the recipients today, and your family members and representatives. I 
call this meeting adjourned. So I thank you for coming. Thank you.